Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm glad y'all could be here with us, whether it's here or at home. Um, it's a gorgeous day outside. I hope everybody's got plans to be outside at least a little bit. Uh, we got a busy, busy, busy month here at Shiloh. Uh, this morning, we are pleased to have Lieutenant Jessica Pierre here with us with the Salvation Army. Everybody's been working really hard all month. Uh, collecting and taking donations for her organization. On Wednesday, we have Food for Body and Spirit. We are gonna have sandwiches this week. So bring whatever kind of sandwiches you like or maybe a salad or a dessert because I like sweets. <laughs> um, after that, we will be watching The Chosen at seven o'clock. Um, it's a great show. Um, it's it's been an inspiration to me. I've enjoyed it. Um, we have a number of things coming up. Um, we have developed an outreach team. Um, the purpose of this team is to create activities and things to do for both of our congregation and our community. We've got to get better out into our community and not just bringing them here, but going out to them. So we have our first meeting set for this Thursday, March 9th at 6.30. Um, we'll meet in one of the classrooms because I know Alamance Strings will be in here. Um, you, everybody's welcome to come. If you don't feel like participating in the actual team, that's okay because we will call on you for volunteers for the events. Um, I'm gonna need those too. Um, so everybody's welcome, anybody, uh, come, if you've got great ideas, we'd love to have you. Our first activity for the outreach team is going to be on March 19th. We're going to meet here about 10 o'clock before service, and we're going to fill out Easter cards for the Alamance House down the street. Um, that's getting in, into our community. That is a group of people who are, you know, not nurtured to as much as other groups in our community. Um, our shepherding team, or excuse me, our session met with the shepherding team on Thursday. We continue to discuss the vision of our church, where we want to go. Um, and it got a little difficult um, in discussing not you know, discussing what we can do. So I encourage all of you to come sit in on these meetings and watch the hard work that your session's doing. Um, this is not easy. It's, I, I really underestimated how hard this was gonna be. Um, the next meeting will be on the 28th at six o'clock here in the sanctuary. Again, I encourage all of you to come. We have choir practice today at two. Oh, I'm really proud of Thomas. Um, if you notice, all the lights have been fixed uh, with the exception of one sconce over here in this chandelier. But uh, Thomas came over yesterday and replaced all the lights. Bob got us all new lights and we can see a little better. Uh, oh, men, this is your time to participate. Herb is re resurrecting his men's breakfast. It will be the last Sunday of this month. It, that is the 26th at eight o'clock in the Scout Hut. All the men are encouraged to participate. Your new newsletters for the month of March are in the back of the, um, in the, the lobby on the table. Um, feel free to grab one. If you need one mailed, I have a list and I will get those out in the mail on Monday. So as I've been up here, um, there has been a slideshow playing. Um, this is uh, Women's History Month, and Bob Snow has went through and put together a slideshow of all the women of Shiloh. Um, there's quite a few pictures going back multiple years. So um, y'all enjoy that and be sure to thank Bob uh, these women have done a lot for this church. 
And that's all I have this morning. Uh, let's prepare ourselves for worship. Good morning. Please join me for the invocation. Lord of light, gather us together in bonds of love that can never be broken. Bonds that only come from knowing you. Bless our worship as we lift our voices in praise to you in your presence. Amen. Now we are going to transition to the call to worship and you um, will uh, respond with the words that are in bold. When we are tempted to think of our immediate needs and turn our back on others, Jesus draws us back to reality. When we think that wealth, power, status are the answers to life's dilemmas, God draws us back to reality. When we want to really find out if God means what God says, we are tempted to create little tests of faithfulness, and God brings us back to reality. Amen. And our scripture this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through chapter 5, verse 2. And the word of God says this. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, 
They have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with the continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Will you pray with me? Most gracious and loving God, we gather here in your presence to worship and praise you. In this moment of silence and listening, open our hearts and minds to your every thought and care. We are so easily drawn away to the cares of this world. Bring us back into your presence and at your feet. 
You have shown us love through your son, and because of that sacrifice for us, we have learned to love in return. We have found that love in your word, and we have brought it to our daily lives and to the whole world. We have given it freely to our families and our friends and neighbors, and now you have asked us to give it as freely as you give your grace to all that come into our lives. Love that needs no merits, grace that cannot be earned. Love that is forever, and grace that knows no bounds. All thanks and praise to you, God of the universe. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, Lord, for those here at Shiloh and with connections to Shiloh, for healing and restoration. We pray for Elsie, Barbara, Johnny, and Kara, Bain and Ethel, Sam and Ellen, and Robbie, Debbie and Anna Rose, Jennifer and Marguerite and Billy. We pray for our church and our session, for our outreach into our community, for each other and for our families and loved ones, for friends and neighbors, for those we have been given to pray and lift up for healing. We pray for comfort for the victims of shootings and natural disasters and that need our help. We pray for the hungry and the homeless and those who are victims of war and violence. Be with them and cover them with your love. Help us send supplies and food as much as we can and multiply it to meet the need. Help us bridge the gap of understanding and reach for the hands in need. Lord, in your mercy. Help bring us together in love for the kingdom of heaven brought to earth. We pray for our leaders and their quest for peace and for forming a bulwark against aggression. Help them find your will and be examples to others. Help them as they help one another and join hands in agreement as they stand together as people of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our journey to the cross and with our Savior in this Lenten walk. Guide our footsteps as we follow you into this world to revive the name of Jesus. Give us understanding on enthusiasm in our commitment to you. Bring us ever closer to each other and to those around us in our community as we walk this road with the disciples and with Jesus. The journey we'll take, uh, we will take from Nazareth to Jerusalem to bring our faith alive. Help us as we pray. Keep our feet in the dust of his teaching, the light of his word. We pray it all in the name of Jesus as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join us now in the song of worship, number 358, Love Divine, All Loves Exceeding.
Good morning again. What a privilege and pleasure it is to be with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share um, a little bit about myself, but more importantly, God's words with you this morning. So my name is Jessica Pierre, and I am the lieutenant at the Salvation Army here in Burlington, um, but we serve all of Alamance County. Now, you may be wondering what a lieutenant is and what is this uniform that I'm wearing? Um, so the Salvation Army is literally an army in which all of its members are considered to be soldiers and its pastors, which is what I am, were given ranks like the U.S. Army. So as a lieutenant, I'm within the first five years of serving as a pastor and officer in the Salvation Army, um, but I am a pastor first and then I'm an administrator second. So preaching, my first and foremost um, mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and then to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. That is our mission. And the beautiful thing that I love about the structure of the Salvation Army is that I get to do this um, with my husband full time. So both of us are in this ministry together. Um, and we have um, a beautiful, spicy, almost two-year-old girl. I think there's a picture that's going to come up of our family. There we are. Yep. And actually, we actually have another one that's due in August this year. So we're about to be a family of four. Um, yes, so that's us. Um, so we have been in Burlington since June 2021, and we have absolutely fallen in love with this community. And this morning, that is exactly what I will be speaking about. It's love, specifically loving the people that God has placed around you. Um, but more specifically, the love that Jesus has for us and the love that Jesus is calling us to have for other people. Since I have already shared so much about myself, I'll share one more thing, and it's that I absolutely love romantic comedies. I love romance movies. There is just something incredibly good about a good love story. And one of my absolute favorites is The Notebook. I don't know if you guys have seen that one, <laughs> and I'm sure some of you have. And no matter how many times I've seen this movie, I promise you, I'm not going to give you any spoilers if you haven't seen it, I always cry at the end and I'm always laughing in between like it's my first time. And I know I'm not the only one that's like obsessed with these love stories because romantic comedies have been maxing out in the box office since the beginning of the film industry. And I think the reason that we love these beautifully crafted love stories is because we were all created for love. And that's the reason why romantic movies, romance, all of that will always have a spot in our culture and why we will always be drawn to them. Love is essential to who we are and how we experience the world around us. God purposefully created us to want to receive love and to want to give love. And this morning I want to reassure you that the perfect love story doesn't just exist in the movies. As a matter of fact, I think the movies are only attempting to imitate the true love, the perfect love that can only be found with Jesus. Jesus as a source of perfect love is what our scripture this morning is all about. Paul was writing to the new believers in Ephesus to encourage them to continue to walk in the way of love with each other. Though this message was crafted with the Ephesians specifically in mind, but this message is also God's word for us today, right here at Shiloh. It's for us. And not just that romantic love that I was talking about that I love so much, but also brotherly love, parental love, all types of love. God wants to perfect us loving each other. He wants to perfect love within us. And before we can talk about loving others, we must first begin with the love that Jesus has for us personally. Knowing how, G how deep Jesus loves us, that's the foundation of loving other people. Truly knowing that Jesus loves us is the beginning of effectively loving the people that's around us. Now, chapter five of our scripture, verse one says that we are to follow God's example as dearly beloved children. The key here is to know and accept that we are dearly beloved children of God. If we haven't entirely accepted the trans transformational love that Jesus provides, we will never be able to fully walk in the way of love with those around us. The more we believe in the deep love that Christ has for us, the more love 
that we will express to other people, that love will grow. So we cannot effectively talk about loving other people without first addressing our acceptance of Jesus' love for us personally. So how do we come to know the depth of Jesus' love for us? How do we come to accept that we are indeed children of God? Well, let's take a look at verse 2. What does Paul say? It says, And walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So first, we can know that Jesus loves us because of what it cost him. Jesus loves us so much that it cost him his life. He willingly gave himself up for us as a sacrifice to God. So his love for us, it's sacrificial. Jesus' love for us cost us nothing, but it cost him everything. And secondly, we can also see the depth of Jesus' love for us by how undeserving we are of it. You know, if we spent all of our lives being perfect and doing everything right, and as a result of that, God said, okay, I love you then, it wouldn't be as convincing and as profound as the reality that he loved us while we were still sinners. If someone only loves you when you are good, is it really love? Parents, do you only love your children when they're good? <laughs> Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5 that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. So we know the depth of Jesus' love for us in relation to how undeserving we are of it. Paul tells the Ephesians in chapter 3, verse 17 through 19, and he says this, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. The Hebrew word for God's love for us is called hesed. It's hesed love. And that love can be translated as a loyal love, a compassionate love, an unfailing love, a steadfast and faithful love. So through Jesus, God's love has not, cannot, and will not fail us. It is a love that surpasses knowledge. So we cannot mentally, fully grasp the love of God. So the key to knowing how deep Jesus' love is for us is to learn it for ourselves through his word, through scripture. We have to be intentional in meeting Jesus face to face by spending time together in church like we're doing right now, but also spending time personally in his word, us reading his word. And that is the only way that we're going to personally and deeply know the transformational love of Jesus. We have to read this Bible for ourselves. So you see, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible is it's really it's one big love story of a God who is doing everything. He is long-suffering, he's patient, he's kind, he's forgiving, he's merciful, because he wants to bring his people back to himself, and he wants to keep them protected under his covenant. And the word of God says that God is love. God doesn't just love, he is love. That means that as, at his nature, at his core, love is inherently who he is. Everything else that God does is born out of who he is and that he is love. So God is compassionate because he is love. He's merciful because he is love. He is good, he's just, he's kind, he's perfect because he is love. And, he, and we are able to love him because he first loved us. That's what the word tells us. The truth is you are loved more than your brain has the capacity to fully understand. And I think the enemy is constantly trying to work against us. Um, and he wants nothing more than for us to feel unworthy or ashamed, unwanted, and unloved. I see that a lot in teenagers that I work with. They always have this feeling of unwantedness, just a lot of insecurity. And I think that the enemy works so hard at that. But the Bible tells us that lying is the, is the enemy's native tongue. He doesn't know how to speak the truth. And unfortunately, the enemy is out there working in the world trying to persuade us to reject the love of God. 
So because of this, just listening to other people explain Jesus' love for us is just not enough to defend our hearts and our minds from the schemes of the world. So we have to possess the belt of truth and the sword of the spirit for ourselves. The word says to taste and see that he is good. But you can't taste with someone else's mouth. You can't see with someone else's eyes. You know, I could tell you all day how good a Chick-fil-A sandwich is with Chick-fil-A sauce. But until you have it yourself, you don't know what I'm talking about. Until you taste it for yourself. And that's why, that's why this has to be personal. We have to open this book for ourselves and see Jesus here. Love is personal. You must make it personal for yourself by taking time out of your busy schedules, because I know we all are busy, to spend time with Jesus. Jesus says that he is the word made flesh. So when you read the Bible, you are the closest to him that you can be on this side of heaven. The word is him. That's what the Bible says. So once we know and are convinced of Jesus' love for us, we will begin to produce God-given fruit. So that's the root of knowing Jesus' love for us. We will then be able to produce kindness, compassion, and forgiveness and show that out to our community. When Paul encourages us to follow God's example and walk in the way of love alongside each other, he directly refers back to verse 32 in chapter 4, and he spells out the three virtues that stem from love. So verse 32 says this, and be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. This verse repeats what we just talked about, that the love that Jesus has for us is the foundation for any love that we can have for other people out there. It tells us that the force that leads us to be kind and compassionate and forgiving is the fact that Jesus did all of that for us first. Has Christ forgiven you? Has he loved you? Has he been compassionate to you? And it's through that that we are able to exemplify these things to other people around us. So your love for other people accomplishes two tasks. It cares for others and it also glorifies God. Your decision to love as Jesus, is, as Jesus loves will meet human needs and it will honor God. You will bless other people with your love and you will bless God by following his command because he is the source of all love. And Paul doesn't leave us guessing as to what walking in the way of love looks like. He tells us that the way we are to love one another is to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving. And, for, and being forgiving to one another. And we're supposed to be doing that constantly. Because this is the way that God loves us. I fail him a lot. I make mistakes so often. And every time I get on my knees and I ask the Lord for forgiveness, I receive it. And when we choose to love each other in this way, it produces unity and harmony between God and us and in each other. So the love of God will soften and transform our hearts so that we can produce the fruit of the Spirit. You know, at the Salvation Army here, we um, have a food pantry that serves over a thousand people per month. Um, we have social services that serves people in crisis every day that are almost about to get kicked out of their house or their lights are not on. Um, we have a boys and girls club that serves hundreds of kids daily. Um, we also have a family thrift store that's providing affordable merchandise for the community um, to those who need them. And my husband and I, we wake up every day feeling like it's a privilege to lead this charge because we understand the love that God has given us and all that he has done for us. And we just want to be his hands and feet in whatever capacity he's placed us to. So we're able to accept our full load, our full plate, because we are busy people. We accept it because God's love is our foundation. There's no other way we'd be able to do it. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clinging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. On our own, our capacity for loving others is limited. 
It really is. We will never be able to perfect love by looking within ourselves or trying harder. <laughs> you know, when the Holy Spirit reveals to us or opens our eyes that we, you know what, you should be more kind to your spouse. You should be more patient with your spouse. You should be more patient with your children. When, you're, when the Holy Spirit opens your eyes up to that, the way that we actually accomplish that is by surrendering that, saying, yes, you're right, God, show me how. We're not going to perfect love by looking within ourselves because we don't have it in us. We have to surrender to Jesus who perfects love so that he can do that within us. Only Jesus can help us perfect our love in our community and in this world. So we have to be intentional in our prayer life um, and we have to admit to him where we lack and ask for his help. And when we do this, we're not focusing on ourselves and our failures, whatever we may have going on, but we're focusing our eyes on Jesus and his abundance, and we're asking him to pour that within us so that we can be his hands and feet to our families, first and foremost, but then to other people around us, our church family, where we go to work. So being kind, forgiving, and tenderhearted is not something that we naturally do. Our flesh is naturally selfish. I didn't even have to teach my one and a half year old to say mine, mine, mine to everything. She just naturally knows how to do that. Everything is her. She doesn't care about anybody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you see that in children. I think there's a reason God uses those metaphors. He calls us his children. I see that in her. And it's like, girl, you're so, we'll, we'll, we'll try to work on you. We'll teach you. Our flesh is just naturally me, me, me. And we're not going to fix that by looking to ourselves. We're only going to be able to fix that by looking to Jesus and laying it down and surrendering. Jesus can perfect love in us so that we can be of service to our community. So even if you're currently forgiving with, uh, struggling with forgiving someone, or you're maybe having a hard time being compassionate with people that are hard to love, there are people that are hard to love in my life too, you know, but turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Pray for people like that in your life. Pray for Jesus to allow you to forgive the people that are hard to forgive currently in your life. It may not happen the next day, but as we keep praying, the Lord will give us the tools and the resources to perfect love in our life. God himself will provide that to you. So sacrificial love isn't easy, but the toughness of it, how hard something is, doesn't excuse us from having the responsibility to do it. And the word of God tells us we have a responsibility to love and serve those around us. That is our responsibility as Christians, as people who believe in Jesus. Um, one of my friends has this saying, we're blessed to bless. God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to the world around us. We have Jesus, we have to share him. So when we focus our eyes on Jesus, he can do immeasurably more than we can ever imagine in us and through us. Amen. Let's go before the, uh, the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we thank you for your perfect love and how you exemplified that on the cross and how you are continuing to exemplify that in us, in this church this morning. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit can continue to work and move in our hearts to show us how we can first believe, truly accept the love that you have for us as individuals because we were created perfectly and in your image. May we first accept that and allow that love to overflow to those around us. Allow us to be more kind and compassionate to our immediate families, but as well as to the community that's directly around us. We, we can trust you in this, Jesus, and we know you are capable of doing it in us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please join me for our prayer of confession. Forgiving God, you know how easy it is for us to celebrate with joy the wonders of your love. We create wonderful art to represent the joy we feel. Our music soars to the heavens in praise of you. Yet how often we have left our service to you as mere thoughts and intentions without fulfillment. You ask us to be ready to serve you at any time, but we place our commitment on the to-do list of life. We will do these things to them. Forgive our hesitancy and our self-serving ways, O oh Lord. Heal us of the disease of seeking first our own comfort before we engage in the acts of justice and mercy. Open our eyes and ears to the cries of those in need. Help us to give and also to receive the ministries of love and reconciliation as we serve you with our whole hearts. Then our music, our art, our worship, will truly reflect your awesome and abundant love for us. Amen. And for your assurance of pardon, it is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. It is our joy to serve God by helping each other and all those in need. Be assured of God's tender mercy towards you and continue, excuse me, and con continue that love in all that you do. Amen.